Lawrence Stephen Lowry is one of Britain's best-known artists. Famous for scenes like this, his matchstick men in industrial Manchester. He's so popular that one of his paintings recently fetched a record £1.9 million. But for one man, Ivan Ed, couldn't put a price on his love of matchstick men and matchstick cats and dogs, nor on the safety of his family when robbers attack them at home. Our family was very, very close to Mr Lowry for many years. I felt like he was a grandfather figure to me. Uh, he'd come back to our home and he'd be on the floor and playing games with us. Ivan, as a small child, used to go round to Lowry's house with his father and he used to watch him paint and he just absolutely loved it. It was, it was like an obsession to him and it still is today. I wasn't a rich man. I, many years ago, when we first got married, we lived in a council house, and I've just worked hard and hard and hard, and eventually I uh, afforded to buy my first Lowry painting. But it wasn't for the money of them, it was just the love of the paintings. And eventually I've got a good collection of Lowry's work. My wife would sit there at nights looking at the telly. I'd be sitting there at nights looking at the paintings. What happened in May? is going to haunt Ivan and his family for a very long time to come. You are? Come on, sweetie, let's put your shoes on. Come on, good girl. Oh. What shall we do today? Shall we go to park? Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Hello? Oh, I'll be down in a minute. Get in! 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 And there was a life at threat. I, I just was just going to pieces. I just didn't understand what was going on. Get those two! I knew my husband was upstairs, and I was hoping he could hear what was going on, and he'd get help. Louise. <laughs> I could feel the knife sticking into my back. I felt like totally, totally hopeless. I wanted to help them both so much, I didn't really care about my own life. <laughs> I was sat there helpless watching my husband get tied up and being threatened with the knife and there was just nothing I could do about it. We kept looking at each other. We wanted to do something but we couldn't do anything. I just couldn't believe how a grown man could hold a 12-inch knife at a two-year-old baby, let alone anyone else. It's absolutely... You just can't comprehend it at all. Where's the safe? Where's the safe? Is everyone else in the house? I'll kill everyone! I didn't have a, a clue what, how it was going to end. It's all right, it's okay. 
Oh, it's okay, don't go on it, it's all right. We're safe now. I constantly lie there in bed, going through it over it and over it again and again, and just can't stop doing it. And it's just something I hope will go in time. And it's just so heartbreaking what they've done to us to steal this collection, what I've collected for many, many years. Took my own paintings. They've actually took something personal to me. I feel like I've lost something so, so much. And it's relevant to me the cost. It's the personalness what they've took away from me. Any art lover will know what I'm talking about. A picture is emerging of the leader of this gang, the man dressed as a postman. People out there will know who this male is and who the other attackers are. This gang knew what they were after. In the space of a few minutes, hundreds of thousands of pounds of the paintings were stolen. These paintings are very recognisable and the people who have got them are going to have real trouble getting rid of them. Well, it's quite clear these thieves knew what they were after, and they were so violent. I mean, holding a knife to a two-year-old's head. Dick Ellis, you set up and you ran Scotland Yard's art squad. Let's talk about these paintings for a minute, because they're very valuable, aren't they? Well, they are. Um, these are unique Lowry pictures. Um, the viaduct uh, is, is classic Lowry with his matchstick men. Um, valued in the region of £700,000. Um, the tanker entering the Tyne is a very interesting picture. Uh, it was exhibited in 1967, but Lowry never sold it. So again, it's, it's, a, it's unique to Lowry collectors. There were also sketches, and there was his, his, his palette and his brushes as well. So Ivan was such a devotee of Larry that he had these things. The, the, the palette and brushes uh, is very interesting because it's such a collector's piece. It's so unique. Um, it really can't be valued, I don't think. Like, you couldn't put a price on it. it. It's a real collector's item. So what are they going to do with these pictures this game? I mean, where can they sell them? Well, they certainly can't sell them on the open market. Uh, any person thinking of buying paintings of this value uh, they're going to undertake due diligence, they're going to check the painting's provenance, see where they've been, check the stolen property databases to ensure that uh, they're not recorded. And, of course, these are recorded on those databases. I mean, I, I know that there were some Lowry's that were stolen before, and, they, and, and in the end they, they weren't sold on, were they? They well, couldn't be. <laughs> Lowry is, is uniquely an English artist. He doesn't sell particularly well abroad, so the market is in the UK. Um, previously, um, when some Lowry's were stolen, it was just impossible for them to, to market the pictures and the police received a, a phone call and they were recovered inside a white van parked up in Kent. Well, they just couldn't get rid of they them? They couldn't move So them. what are they going to do with them, then, do you think? Um, they, they will have a black market value, which are pennies compared to the to actual their market value. Um, and whether they will do what other criminals have done who steal art today, which is try and use that artwork to, to finance other criminal activities, uh, is probably their only option. Well, if you're the gang and please think you're local from the Stockport area, you heard what Dick had to say, you might as well hand these paintings in. You will never get anything remotely approaching their value. And there's a huge reward for their recovery, though, £70,000. Call us here in the studio, 0500 600, or you can text us, 63399, type crime, space, and then your message, or call Crime Stoppers anonymously, 0800 555 one. My name's Helen Smythe. I was born in Dock Street on the 1st of November 1946. We lived at 86 Dock Street and it was a two bedroomed, two up, two down. I had two sisters and two brothers. My father worked on the docks. He done the engines and he was a shunter and he worked in the same street really. He just used to walk around the street, jump the boards and he was in work with us. So, yeah, and we went to St. Patrick's School, which is not in shot, and that was across the road from where we lived. Next door to the school was the church, so everything we needed was on Dock Street and Pear Street. I'm Mary Kennedy, and I was born at 91 Pear Street with my mum and my granddad and my brother and my sister, and I remember my brother being born in that house. Uh, my mum worked helping out 
in the White Star pub, which is on the picture. And uh, she was very friendly with the landlady, as Helen's mum was as well. My dad drank in the White Star every night. <laughs> Kept it going. Kept it going, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he, he was in the domino team, the White Star domino team. And they, they, before we were born, the White Star had a rugby team and a football team. And we've... You know, we've got photos of that where all our relatives played in it, you know, rugby at the weekend. And they won the cup and we can show you the picture of them winning the cup at the time, which is very nice. This photograph is the rugby team from the White Star, the White Star rugby team. 1919 to 1920. And it's in the backyard of the White Star pub. And uh, they've won the cup. And most of them belong to Dock Street and Per Street. On them, I've got two uncles and two granddads. You've got Edge, Tom Edge. And then we've got H. Bentham. That's uh, one of my uncles. T. Bentham. Bentham. Yeah, Tommy Bentham. Yeah. This one here is my granddad. This is a picture of Pitt Street with the White Star in the background and Jack Ashley, the MP of Stoke, was born and bred in Pitt Street with his family and went to St Patrick's School and I'm sure he also drank in the White Star pub. This is a picture of the White Star Hotel celebrating a New Year's Eve. It's not long, the war was on as you can see, someone's in the uniform. There's the landlady, Harriet. Yeah. That's my mum, Rose. That's Helen's mum, Mary Ellen. That's Ellen's auntie, Flory. Flory. That's Ellen's uncle, Ernie. Ernie. That's Tom Whelan. There's Sarah on there who lived in the White Star with Harriet and she's got her daughter, Kay, with her. This is a group from the White Star going, celebrating, going to watch win, Witness in Wembley, at Wembley. I think it was 1950. And that's my mum here, all dressed in the black and white. My mother used to take us to the pictures um, one night a week, if we were lucky. And before we went out, she put bricks in the oven because the fire was always mm. lit and we had a, a black grate oven. She'd put that in. And sometimes we'd put baked potatoes in. So when we come in from the pictures, we'd have our supper and she'd wrap the brick up and put it in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was made to amend, really. But um, we have very fond memories. Oh, I yeah. wouldn't change Everybody, any of it. Not for would. nothing, I wouldn't change anything. And my uncle was telling me the White Star pub, when they come out on a Friday and a Saturday night, he said they used to gather in the street and play housey housey. He said, and then me granddad would be on the melodium and there'd be so, such a body ta uh, clog dancing. Mm. And they used to have really good fun in the street at night times. Yeah. That was yeah. their entertainment. Yeah. This is the White Star pub in the background and this is St. Patrick's School. Here where me and Helen went to. This is just a, a general photo of St. Patrick's School taken one time in the playground and there's me and Helen here together. That's Helen there and that's me. When we finished school, school on the Friday, we had the weekend and that was the best time. Uh, Saturday we'd play out all day or we'd go to the pictures, the matinee pictures, and then we'd have to go to confession before we could go to communion the next day because we never missed church. Church mm. was a big thing, we never missed church. And we, we couldn't have anything to eat from the night before, then, in them days, till you got your communion. And I wondered why people kept fainting in church and now I know because they'd had nothing to eat or drink from the night before. This photo is uh, one from St. Patrick's on the walking just after our early communion. I'd be about seven or eight on that. And this is me here with the Daffodils, holding the daffodils. We used to dress the streets up, didn't we, Ellen? Oh, yeah. For the walking for Our Lady. Yeah. And we used to paint the streets blue and white yeah. and the window sills and dress all the windows. And the whole of West Bank used to come out yeah. for that. It yeah. was a real big occasion. Yeah. Yeah. 
and we used to love it and wearing our white dresses which we've got photographs of to show our white dresses and veils yeah yes. and we really love and when we used to play out on the field on a Sunday afternoon the priest used to come out Father Burke and he'd collect us all up and take us into Sunday school <laughs> no matter what state we were in from playing we were all gathered up and yeah. took into Sunday yeah. school yeah this is a picture of the May procession, the May Queen, and the White Star in the background. I remember an old man that used to come on like an old jaunting cart, and he'd come round for rags oh, the rag or um, jam jars. I only found that out off my uncle the other mm. night because I wondered. And I used to cry to my mum because he used to take us round the globe, you know, the field in front. Of the white, back uh, of the white And we star. used to love yeah. that as children, you know, on yeah. this heart and cast. Yeah. yeah. I used to cry to my mum mm. to give him some so I could go on it. We did have a coal man that delivered. It was a horse and cart, as you do. And we didn't leave our coal outside. It went under the stairs. Yeah, because you had to look after your call. I think the people had more time for one another where they don't today. Mm. They don't even know who the neighbours are today, do no. they? No. I mean, if you had no milk or no sugar, you'd go and ask Mary Ellen. That's yeah, his Ellen's that's my mother. Go and ask Mary Ellen, or Ellen's mum would say the same to my mum. Yeah. And that's that's how it worked yeah. in those days. Yeah. Everybody you helped. Sure. Every and even now, as we are older as we are now, most of our friends are from West Bank. Because we've all stuck together mm. and we, we meet have, occasionally yeah. and go for meals and go out, out, don't we? Yeah, reunions, and, we certainly yeah. do, yeah. So it was a nice community. But in the summer in the street, um, once tea was over and we were playing in the street, our mothers could bring a chair out and sit there in the street mm. under the window and watch us and then somebody mm. else would come out and they'd be talking while we was playing. It was a very, very slow way of life really mm. you know they wasn't saying now watch the car we just played out and mm. that's how it was it was um it was lovely and my dad was at the pub every night so this one is the white star uh, the children are lined up outside because the head teacher was leaving on that day and she was going to go past in a car and they lined the children up to wave this is a, a photograph of the viaduct down West Bank and this street here is called Viaduct Street and this end house here, my uncle Tom and my auntie Ruth and the family was lived. We're standing now where that photograph is that you've got of the viaduct, of Viaduct Street and this is where my auntie Ruth and my Uncle Tom used to live with the family, just here, with the viaduct behind them. This was West Bank Docks, and my dad worked on this, and he drove the engines uh, with coal, um, which you will see photos of him in the museum on his engine. So we're going round now, and we're going to see some more of the viaduct. Building behind me was a field and it was where Lowry sat to paint the White Star. This is the corner where the White Star pub was. This is Per Street where I was born. The houses was two up two down with an outside toilet. And if you were lucky, a tin bath on a nail at the back door, which mm. we had. Because uh, it was Saturday night, it was bath night. And um, it, they, was, they, was, they had a landlord, but they was, they was not very good. Um, he, he didn't do repairs. You know, they were literally in a really bad state of repair. And we, 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 we just had the living room with an open fire and 
the kitchen, what we call the back kitchen then, where all the washing, my mother had a, like a dolly tub, we'd have the Sunday dinner and we'd, uh, we, when she done the house, she didn't move the carpet, she scrubbed the floor. <laughs> so we had. Yeah, we used to scrub the floor and yeah. what have you. But everyone was very proud. They kept the houses nice. And it was sort of competition when they scrubbed the step because everybody's steps was nice on the front with of the, the house. With the like pommy stuff. Yeah. Pommies. yeah. And w when they did the washing on a Monday, it was always on a Monday. And the, the water then that was over used to swill the yard. And then they used to have to do all the steps, mm. didn't they? And then yeah. we had to help with, you know, the ringing and getting the washing yeah. through the ringer. Yeah. 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 Um, good times, really. Yeah. We're still down West Bank um, and this is where we used to come and play on the promenade and if we wanted to go to Runcorn we'd have to get the transporter. Uh, when we went on the transporter it was a penny to go to Runcorn and a penny to come back. I was telling my daughter about our bath night, you know, with the bath in front, bath of, the in front of the fire and we had no hot water and we, you used to fill pans on the stove, That's didn't right, you? Yeah. She said, what, you had no hot water? You only had one tap. I said, you're joking. Mm. <laughs> I said, it takes us all night to fill the bath up. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then somebody was waiting to get in after you with that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, yes. Um, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't no. change it. It was, um, it was a nice way. I think it's made us what we are today, really. Um, and we're still friends we're after still all friends, that time. Still been best Brought friends up together. since we were mm. since we were born. Yeah, best friends. Very nice, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. He painted Salford smoky tops on cardboard boxes from the shop And parts of Ancoats where I used to play I'm sure he once walked down our street Cos he painted kids who had out on the feet The clothes they wore had all seen better days Calling him to come on down and wear the old flat cap They said tell us all about your ways And all about them sulphur days Is it true you're just an ordinary chap And he painted matched up men and matched up cats and dogs He painted kids on the corner of the street that was sparking Beside the greatest of them all And even the Mona Lisa takes a bow This tired old man with air like snow Told northern folk it's time to go The fever came and the good Lord mopped his brow And he left 